The following is a true mech love story. Once upon a time, a marauder raped a catapult. That's right. The mad cat slash timber wolf was the unholy loin spawn. So who's your daddy, timber wolf? Who's your daddy? And going back into the annals of time, back to the age of battle droids, we find that the marauder is there in the beginning. One of the first mechs, or perhaps it's a glaug pod from Macross. In any case, it's the Battletech Marauder. This is the original Battletech Marauder. As time went on, the Marauder evolved, continuously changing. There's so many forms and artworks and variants. And then at one point, the Marauder looks like this. It's the Grey Death Legion, you can see their symbol. And I love their little pod art, or pod text, not a clan ERPPZ. Haven't you ever put yourself into the cockpit and imagined yourself piloting a marauder? I mean, what would it be like? And what exactly does a marauder cockpit look like anyway? The Marauder, the mech of mechs. This is many a Battletech player's favorite mech. I mean, just take a look at it. I mean, as a mech warrior, if you're gonna like die in battle, wouldn't you want to be in a Marauder when it happens? And just take a look at the size of this thing. Just look at that pilot and look at that foot. That is a big foot. And a big foot like that is good for either stomping rats or perhaps stomping locusts. This mech defines fear. Just look at it. Not only does it have long range weapons, it's also got weapons pods it can punch with. And if you listen to my reading of Mercenary Star Chapter 1, you will uh, hear about this mech in action. Well, let's see what the original TRO has to say, other than the fact that it's prominently displayed on the cover. I mean, it is the Marauder. So, page one again. Heavy. Page 98. Let's go through and find out what we've got. Well, these ancient mechs. The original unseens, many of them. There's some Battletech originals. And many from Dugram or from Macross or Crusher Joe. Somewhere in here, I think. Right next to the Warhammer should be. Oh yeah, there it is, the Marauder, good old Marauder, the book's kind of shot up here, because this page has been used a lot. And if you missed the uh, spec sheets and the data, here's the still shot. Here's a detailed still shot of the weapons and armor allocations for the standard unit. And here's the uh, original artwork. Overview. 
the Mad 3R Marauder is considered one of the most effective battle mechs in existence. When first built by GM in the early 2600s, its unique design was intended as the precursor of a new generation of mechs. With the fall of the Star League, however, the other mechs in the Marauder series remained on the drawing board. Although the Marauder is a common mech today, many of its design elements remain unique. Capabilities Originally intended as a heavy attack or support mech, the addition of sophisticated Dalban Micronics comm gear enabled the Marauder to function as a command vehicle in areas of heavy fighting. It continues so today, with Marauders often appearing in command lances. Though its twin PPC arrangement is reminiscent of more traditional mechs such as the Rifleman and the Warhammer, the Marauder's unique, more versatile ball and socket arm joints give it a faster traverse rate and a greater feel of fire. The Valiant Lamellar Armor is another of the Marauder's singular features. Less massive and better able to distribute heat and kinetic energy than other armor types, the secret of its manufacture has been lost. In the present era, the Marauder is one of the few mechs to use it. As blasted patches have come have to be replaced with conventional armor, some Marauders now resemble metallic patchwork quilts. The Magna Hellstar PPCs that provide the Marauder's main armament are of an advanced design, compact enough to be carried in the mech's arms and durable enough to withstand the heavy shocks of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Marauder's secondary armament, a GM Whirlwind autocannon, was added almost as an afterthought. The cannon's linkage to the chassis has been troublesome, and the gun itself tends to be rather temperamental, often refusing to function at critical moments. The mech's unusual profile makes it a harder target than other man-like mechs, but some design flaws occasionally plague Marauder pilots. The tenuous linkage between the autocannon and the main chassis is a frequent target because a successful hit would disable the autocannon. The same applies to the rotation ring between the chassis and the leg assembly. Numerous marauders now bear improvised armor around these vulnerable areas. Another source of trouble is the Dalban high-res tracking system located in the marauder's forward section, which severely limits the operator's field of vision. These problems are comparatively minor, however. The marauder remains a potent battlefield weapon. In addition to its command duties, the MAD 3R operates as a dangerous heavy attack vehicle, outclassed only by mechs such as the Stalker and the Rare Battlemaster. Capable of shooting lighter mechs to pieces and battling hand to hand with more heavily armored opponents, the Marauder is usually deployed in a heavy shock unit, along with Warhammers and Thunderbolts. Its PPC and autocannon also enable the mech to lay down a long range barrage before actual combat. Battle History After the fall of the Star League, the Marauder found ample employment in the hellish chaos of the Succession Wars. This common, dangerous mech continues in the retinue of every successor state. An early example of successor state use of Marauders was in 2828, when Duchess Ilsa Liao sent Barton's battalion of the 1st Regiment, McCarran's Armored Cavalry, against House Merrick on Pella II. Barton's battalion consisted of 90 marauders massed together with 18 warhammers. This experiment, tantamount to Duchess Liao placing all her eggs in one basket, House Liao possessed only a few hundred marauders at this time, and Barton's unit represented a large portion of them, was a success. The marauders annihilated the inferior mechs placed in their way by the beleaguered merics, while only losing four of their number. Barton's battalion continued to be extremely successful until Merrick forces, falling back on Graham 6, caught them in a gorge outside the city of Gigia. Realizing that they had finally cornered the infamous Major Barton, the Merricks threw two full battalions of archers and riflemen against him. Unable to close in on the Merrick mechs, and with their field of fire restricted by the rock walls of the Do and the Dalbin optical system, the Liao Marauders withdrew with heavy losses. Realizing the value of our Marauders and the folly of concentrating them all in individual units, the Duchess dispersed Barton's battered mechs to other units. 
Il Saldiao's noble experiment has yet to be repeated in such a scale, but it is not uncommon for lances and companies to have a high number of marauders. Variants There are no four major variants of the durable and versatile marauder. House Davian's Marauder D has dispensed with the troubles of modern cannon altogether, replacing it in its vulnerable linkage with a heavy Magna Mark III laser. This modification is not without its problems. The addition of the laser has forced the removal of a heat sink, and the laser's high heat buildup occasionally limits the Marauder D's effectiveness. Overheating and the lack of reliable PPCs have forced House Merrick to replace the Marauder's characteristic twin PPCs with heavy lasers. The reduction in heat has, to some extent, compensated for the concurrent reduction in firepower, and so the Marauder M is a widely used variant. A compromise between the two extremes is Liao's Marauder L, which seems to have satisfied no one. Replacing one PPC with a heavy laser has caused problems, as the Dalban fire control system is sometimes unable to coordinate the two different weapons on the same circuit. Attempts to modify or repair the system have been unsuccessful, as no one alive understands the technology. Often, Marauder L pilots will disconnect the heavy laser from the fire control unit altogether and simply use a manual switch to shoot. I didn't read through the uh, Bounty Hunter text, but I'll include you uh, this still shot so you can read it yourself if you want. So the Marauder actually does get a Clan Era refit in the 3050 TRO. Because, I mean, if the clans are showing up and they copied the Marauder with the Mad Cat, then I might as well beef up the Marauder too. So let's check it out. Marauder. Still 75 tons here. 174. There is, however, a Marauder 2 with 100 tons. 212. So Marauder, let's first check out. The Marauder. First, let's flip through all the clan stuff. Many of the original 3025 mechs have upgraded versions. But then... There, there's the Marauder, the 75 ton version, the Marauder 1, redone. It looks a bit different, a little bit different, but still the original Marauder. And in case you can't find a sheet for it, here are the spec sheets and the uh, story and the... Uh, details so you can reconstruct it and create your own sheet for it, you know, just in case you want to try it out. Overview. With the decoding of Star League secrets, one of the first steps taken by House Davian was to begin making plans to improve upon the already fearsome Marauder. This eagerness backfired when the Draconis Combine captured the Marauder factory on Quentin during the War of 3039. The identical design is beginning to emerge from Korea's independent weaponry factory on Quentin, as from Davian's General Motors plant on Kaithil, prompting the Federated Commonwealth to change the configuration somewhat on the marauders produced by Bowie Industries and Steiner Space. The shared MAD 5D design, the first to reach the field, employs double heat sinks to handle the increased heat generation of a host of new weapons. The extra light engine saves enough weight for an additional two and a half tons of armor, beefing up mostly the legs and right and left torso. This model also has jump jets, further endearing the design to its pilots. The entirely new weapons array consists of two extended range PPCs, two medium pulse lasers, a single large pulse laser, and a streak SRM-2 launcher. Bowie Industries' MAD 5S version, at least six months away from production because of the switch in plans and redesign work, appears to be an attempt to fool House Kurita. Plans show neither the beefed-up armor nor the jump jets, keeping some of the look of the original Marauder. The root surprise for any opposing mech warrior is the Poland main Model 8 Gauss cannon, replacing the large pulse laser and streak missiles on the MAD 5D. Also about six months from production, 
It's the Mad 5M model of the Free Worlds League, expected in quantity from the Ronin Inc. plant on Wallace and the Free Worlds Defense Industry facility on Gibson. It will combine jumping ability, double heat sinks, and the original armor. With cellular ammunition storage equipment to protect the shells, it will mount the untried Oriente Model Zero LB-10X autocannon. Its other weapons consist of two Tronal PPL-20 large pulse lasers and two Magna 400P medium pulse lasers. Lacking Star League technology, the Tarian Concordat continues to produce the MAD 3R at a prodigious rate. Still producing this model are Taurus Territorial Industries on Taurus, Vandenberg Mechanized Industries on New Vandenberg, and Pinard Protectorates Limited on Pinard. So now let's take a final look again at the Marauder 2. This is the 100 ton version for the Clan era refit. So again, Marauder 2, this time 100 tons, page 212. Let's see what we got. Let's flip through all these guys here. Good old 3025s turned into 3050s with their upgrades. And now, First there, Marauder, the Marauder 1, which we've already talked about, and finally, let's get on over to the Marauder 2, which should be out here pretty soon. Yeah, there's the Marauder 2, the meaner, heavier Marauder. It's got little winglets on it. And just in case you missed out when I was flipping through, these are the still shots of the specs and the story and its various components and layout. In case you want to reconstruct it and you don't have a sheet for it. Overview. Once the exclu exclusive property of the mercenary Wolf's Dragoons, the Marauder II has appeared in other units only within the last 10 years. The most notable of these is Barber's Marauder IIs, a mercenary unit stationed on Rents. This unit, formerly called Miller's Marauders, was based on layover during the Fourth Succession War under the command of Major Grissom Miller. The unit provided aid and comfort to the Dragoon families recuperating on nearby Robinson. Its most important service, however, was the secret loan of dropships to Zeta Battalion for its climactic rescue of the rest of the Dragoons on crossing. When the unit's current commander, Major Susan Barber, expressed interest in the Dragoons Marauder II mechs, Colonel Jamie Wolf gave Blackwell Industries the go-ahead to supply Major Barber with all she needed. The continuing shipments to this unit, now of regiment size, gave our blessed order its first glimpse of the new model, undoubtedly being deployed by Wolf's Dragoons. The MAD 5A uses a General Motors 300 extra light engine to conserve weight for heavier weapons. Two Magna Firestar extended range particle projection cannon replace the older Hellstar models and a Mydron XL LB-10X autocannon replaces the heavy laser in the right torso. Interestingly, the right torso section comes with a case configuration, even though no ammo is stored there. This has led many to speculate that some projectile weapon field kit variant is contemplated. So as you can see, there are a lot of variants. We won't have time to go over them all, but I'll try to cover the highlights and I'm pretty sure I probably left out someone's favorite marauder I mean there are a lot of variants a lot but enough with the presumptuous apologies let's get on with the variants mad 1r is the earliest version of the marauder used by the royal brigades and the SLDF the 1R has case to protect the autocannon ammunition and carried 11 tons of ferrofibrous armor. It was made in 2612. 
it is 1420 battle value. The MAD 2R, this is an upgrade of the 1R that uh, in 2760, the PPCs were upgraded to ER PPCs. Remember, this is the old Star League still. Uh, necessity, ne, this uh, necessitated a upgrade of the heat sinks to double heat sinks. It has 1630 battle value, but it is a Star League Ameris Civil War era variant. The MAD 3R, this is the standard uh, 3025 slash uh, third and fourth succession war era unit. The two, two, two PPCs, two medium lasers, and AC5 tends to overheat. So you want to run it over into a pool of water. The uh, later on upgrades in 3050 fixed most of these issues. But I consider this a space control mech. You may disagree. And that's because it needs to stay near a pool of wire, water to have a maximum combat effectiveness. So really it just kind of conquers the map, but has to stand in a pool. MAD 2T, this is the Tarian Concordat version of the Royal Marauder. It swaps a standard auto cannon for the LB-5X. It is 1646 battle value. The 3D Marauder, it's already talked about before in the text, but I'll talk about it again. It's a modification of the mech by Davian in 2834. It removed all the ammo. Uh, that means they had to replace the AC-5 with the large laser. I personally like this a lot. Uh, this saved weight, uh, added four more heat sinks, so they get extra heat allowed by the large laser. It is 1136 battle value 1 or 1470 battle value 2. So that's the one you should use, 1470. The MAD 3L, this is the House Liao 2905 version. Um, it tries to replace one of the PPCs with a large laser to make it more heat, heat efficient. Um, but uh, lore-wise, it didn't work very well because the targeting system wasn't able to handle it but it did get ex two extra heat sinks. It's 1369 battle value, and it's a great mech for the 3025 era, though I personally actually like the Davian or the 3R just for nostalgia purposes. The 3M was the 2873 variant of, for the Free Worlds League. So this one, Free Worlds League, League has lots of large lasers, but has problems with PPCs. So it basically replaced the PPCs with large lasers. So it runs cooler, um, but it does less damage. So it has four extra heat sinks, but it is much better off heat management wise. It's 1335 battle value. The MAD-5 CS is the Comstar variant for the Battle of Tukayid. It's especially designed specifically for that battle. It's sort of a simple upgrade to the 3R. It's got a ER PPC, a medium pulse laser in each arm. And then the AC-5 was replaced by the LB-10X, which has two tons of ammo. And it's got 18 double heat sinks and a 300 XL engine, um, but it's a 1648 battle, battle value, so costly. The MAD-5R is the 3068 upgrade to the MAD-3R. It's got an XL engine and its heat sinks are all Double heat sinks now. The PPCs are ER PPCs, and the AC5 is a rotary AC5, which is pretty badass. And the uh, two medium lasers are still kept. Also, it's got 14 tons of armor and a Guardian ECM, which is pretty good, and a C3 slave. It's, however, it is very costly in 1877 battle value. Then I'm going to jump to a Word of Blake design, the Mad 9W. This one is uh, another 3068-ish type era, 3075-ish era. I'm not sure what year it was actually made, but sometime in the Jihad. It's got an ER large laser, a medium pulse laser in each arm. It's got a stub-nosed PPC in the torso, five improved jump shuts. Uh, it's got its improved C3 computer, the targeting sharing, and it's got a light fusion engine and a heavy-duty gyro, so that way it can take a little more extra hit. Uh, how, it's battle value 1788, so kind of costly. We'll see if it's worthwhile in the battle sims. Then I've got the uh, 9W2. 
which is basically the nine W's that have been captured from the word of Blake during the Jihad era or after the Jihad and retro converted from the improved C3 to a C3 slave. So it's um so it's got twin ER large lasers, medium pulse lasers, uh, and a single snub nose PPC. It's got a uh, a slightly lower speed, so it's got five improved jump jets, heavy duty gyro, a Guardian ECM C3 slave, light fusion engine, and it is 1868 battle value. Then I've got something special for you, a custom variant. This one's the Keegan variant from his uh, Cavaliers book series. It's the only issue it has is that it's not really fully 3025 legal because it's got double heat sinks. I think in the stories or something, somehow they managed to get some cash and that had double heat sinks or something. But it's got three large lasers and two medium lasers and a bunch of double heat sinks. That makes it considerably more effective than the standard Marauder. The Mad 4A the Marauder 2 is built using the technology available in 3012 when the design was first constructed. The mech carries its primary weapons two Magna Hellstar PPCs and replaces the AC-5 with a large laser. For close combat, the mech carries a pair of medium lasers. Additionally, the mech is built using a standard fusion engine as the XL engine on the 5A was not available at the time. It is 2073 battle value, so quite expensive, but also quite capable. And then last but not least, the Marauder 5A. This one is the true standard Marauder 2. That is, if someone says you got a Marauder 2, then this is the one that you've got. It's got two ER PPCs, two medium lasers, an LB-10X auto cannon, as well as the XL engine and 29 single heat sinks. However, it is quite expensive, 2,058 battle value, but it solves many of the problems of the uh, original Marauder series, which were tended to be under heat sunk, and it does not resort to double heat sinks. Okay, so we discussed the technical specifications, but how do these different variants actually do in combat? Well, let's take a look at some combat sims. If you haven't seen one of my mech reviews before, I do computerized round robin sims of every mech against every other mech, and then I print out the results of win rates. Now what about the combat effectiveness of all these different variants. I mean, and these are just the some of the most common variants. I mean, there's a lot of other variants I didn't get over through, and the Marauder 2 has a lot more variants that I didn't get into either. So I had to kind of limit it, otherwise this would just be too long. Well, obviously, the Mad 4A, considering it's a 100-tonner, has the highest win rate which is surprising it actually beats the 5A, but I suspect that's because those ER PPCs just produce too much heat, and the number of heat sinks is the same between the two variants, so it actually is less combat effective than the 4A. Now, a user or a listener created variant, the Mad Keegan, the Keegan variant, that one is the most combat effective of the lower tech variants, but note it has double heat sinks as its only high tech component, so you can't really truly use it in a 3025 game. But what is of note is that all of its components are otherwise low tech. Of the three series, the Mad 3D seems to be the best, or, or actually the 3M, they're kind of both the best. Um, but the uh, 3D and 3M standing out, those are legit in the 3025 era, which is important. The 3R, even though I got a special soft spot for it, has just some defects that make it less effective. Then, of course, the Comstar variant is highly effective, but the problem is that's a 
um, that's a Battle of Dukaid era mech, so you can't really use that in 25, but you could use it in the 3050s era. And then, of course, there's the 9W and the 9W2. Those are Jihad area, so more like the 3075-ish era. Um, and also, those have IC3 and C3 network parts. But it's not enough to look at the win rates. You also have to normalize for the battle value, because it doesn't do you any good if you always win if your battle value cost is really high. So if you look at the wins per battle value, you get slightly different results. So if battle value adjusted, the Marauders are all kind of the same, except with the exception of the 5R, which I'm not sure why that one is not as good. And also the Mad, the Keegan 3 uh, is also a very good variant for its battle value efficiency, as well as the 3M. Otherwise, they're all roughly 0.4-ish. But enough with the Sims now. Let's get on with gratuitous Marauder artwork. Tech, I'm going to be so gratuitous that I'm even going to include Robotech slash Macross artwork. I mean, everyone wants a Marauder in their command lance. I mean, Wolf's Dragoons, the Fox's Teeth, everyone. Everyone has a Marauder either as their command mech or in their command lance. This desirability has an unfortunate side effect. And that side effect comes when you try to get miniatures. Or specifically, when you try to get vintage miniatures. Since the Marauder is so sought after, it can get faked and recast. In fact, here's my own personal fake Marauder out of resin. Check this out. This was a misprint longbow pack, except it had a bunch of Marauder legs in it. I tried to buy it, but it, I got overbid. I would say the cheapest way to get a Marauder on eBay would be a Marauder pin like this one. But a more typical way would be to get like a open pack unit, good shape, about a hundred bucks right now. And then back in the uh, good old days when they still included hex bases in the blue cards, this one is a 225 bucks. Imagine how much I was jumping for joy when I saw a battlefield card, Battle Droids and Marauder, for only 410 bucks. It's like, damn, I was thinking this is some sweet time to score some lead bullion. But uh, alas, the price just kept on going up and up. $600. And then finally, my God, over 1200 bucks. Damn. Damn, this thing ended up being almost its weight in gold. One of my earlier videos, quite a long time ago, more than a year ago, maybe it was even two years ago or some, or even more, um, I posted about how I thought a Marauder might someday go for a thousand bucks. And I got all these flame comments about, no way, that can't possibly be. And I was thinking this is going to be like 20 years in the future or something. But instead, it was like one year in the future. You don't have to pay so much for it. I mean, here's another variant. I think this is actually a Macross that's been turned into a Battletech. Here's the same guy trying to say, sell his painting and decal skills on that uh, Macross Mini. And this, I believe, is the original Macross Mini, or the Macross Sculpt. If you look carefully, it is slightly different. Here's that original uh, Battletech Marauder, except this is the second version because it's got a hex base instead of like a square-shaped base. This is the view from the rear. But it's got the same leg and arm structure as the original, as well as the gun, the AC-5. And now it's time to break down into a mishmash of random, gratuitous art. 
with no particular plan. All these different variants, custom variants. Some are holding axes in their hands because they've just been customized. Some are reseen, some are unseen, some are Marauder 2 clan. Some of these even are like large size museum or 172nd scale 3D print jobs or 160th scale 3D print jobs. CAD models, you can order your SLA uh, to print at will if you want to build yourself some lances. Just everything imaginable. You can get all kinds of variants of Marauders on eBay. Uh, some of these are Iron Winds, some vintage. You can just, just take a look at all these different versions. Here's the uh, Foundry Toys fake variant that was uh, on sale on eBay at one time. And I think this one's like a third sculpt that someone's added uh, whiskers to for its uh, sensor pods. And here's a uh, clean version of the Marauder 2. You can look at the uh, arm pods that are similar to the updated Marauder 1. Um, and the legs, which are also similar to the original Marauder one, at least one of the one of the early sculpts. So um, you've got a lot of options. I personally am not as excited about some of these uh, reimagined sculpts, but uh, I guess some people, whoever grew up with that particular sculpt, might imagine that it's the good one and they might not like the vintage ones for all I know just take a look at this thing I mean this thing is starting to look almost more like a crab in a sense but uh, it is actually a marauder too I think but all things must come to an end sooner or later and so I shall end this with a picture of my favorite marauder that's because it's my old battle droids marauder kind of beat up, arm about to fall off, missing its AC5, but it's my Battle Droids Marauder.